Hello and welcome to episode 007 of GoldenEye 007. Sadly not the final episode of the LP, but we are finishing the main story here, so close enough, I guess. Oh yeah, that works out then. So first off, we head to the Water Caverns. Which is a thing they made up for the game, because, well... In the film, of course, there's the big satellite dish that is underwater until it isn't, and Rare figured that, well, the water has to go somewhere. So we have these caverns here. Sure. And yeah, we have to blow up some computers and contact Jack Wade. So yeah, if we destroy the consoles, then Janus can't hide the dish again, so... So I guess that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Still love the elevator music here. It's real good. <laughs> yeah, we saw Trevelyan just run off. We'll see him later in the end of the level, but... But that's a little bit from now. Honestly, I think Caverns... It's not a bad level by any means, but I think it's kind of a filler level. Because hmm. after Control, you're like, okay, I want to take down Trevelyan and finish this thing. But instead, you have to go through this whole whole thing I'm a jig here in the caverns and it takes forever. I mean, based on what you're saying about how this was like a game uh, exclusive locale, yeah, it does kind of sound like it would be filler just based on that. Yeah, it kind of hurts the pacing, I think. It's also the longest level in the game, which doesn't really help matters. Right, right. The cheat unlock time for this is 9 minutes 30 seconds. Damn. Which is not actually the longest. The longest is for the infinite ammo cheat in control. But of course that takes forever for many reasons, because you have to protect Natalia and she has to hack all the computers and stuff, so... Right, right. But yeah, that is on Secret Agent. Which, once you have done it on Double O Agent, is incredibly easy. But yeah, Caverns. This is a level where you really want to take it quite slow and just... Just kinda try to get as many headshots as possible and... Well, this is not ideal. Generally, you don't want to fight more than one enemy. Right. Because these guys do have some pretty power powerful weapons as well, so... Uh, I was gonna say, these, these doors are very Metroid. Yeah, yeah, sadly they don't open when you shoot them. I mean, that's probably better for this game, considering you actually have limited ammo. And, you know, you don't want to alert the guards every time you want to move to a room. I mean, that is fair enough. But then, they don't get alerted if you just shoot it with the pistol once. Kind of on point with these pistol snipes in this level. Mm -hmm. That guy didn't even care. Oh, I'm getting shot at again? Bill? Ugh, that crazy Bill. I'm pretty sure I actually shot him in the head like three times there. What are you, you doing? Did. This is no time for line <laughs> dancing. <laughs> I think he got the point after a bit. Yeah, if you shoot near them when they can have their arms up, then they will just run away. Now here in caverns, you want to blow up 
these wooden crates because all of them have ammo in them. Now I think blowing up these ammo crates should probably result in the ammo not being usable, but... It's usable? Okay. We can get a whole bunch of ammo in this level. It's like the most ammo we're ever gonna get on Double O Agent. Yeah, no kidding. Um, wrong way, idiot. Yeah, I just want to scare them off because they can and will run into the explosions. And of course, we also do have the Minimize Scientist Casualties objective. Okay, there's one guy coming in, but he's just running past, so... Let's just go ahead and follow him. I see Trevelyan only hires the best and brightest. And that takes care of one set of pump controls. And there was apparently also a bit planned for this level that involved the water level rising. And I think it would have been in this room, because this kind of looks like the sort of room that would have that sort of thing. Yeah, it, yeah, I could definitely see that. This just being like a race to get up before you drown. Yeah, but they couldn't get it to work, so... So we didn't get that. I think that might have been a fun gimmick. Would have been pretty cool for... for like, 97 at least. Yeah, but I guess since it was 97, they couldn't really get it to work. Yeah... That's okay, Sonic Adventure's a, a year away, I guess. I don't think that's that uh, Lost World is really has really the same gimmick as what we described here, but it it's close enough. Ah, uh, close enough, yeah. I could have just thrown a mine in there and just blown these idiots up. Yeah, that would have uh, probably been faster. Okay, I didn't expect all of them to come out. <laughs> Usually it's just the three or so guys that are, like, in the front. But we got all of them. That dude really wanted to kiss the, the barrel of your gun there. Well, he certainly got a barrel. Usually those two last guys just kind of stand here and don't do anything, but... I guess we made too much of a racket, so they kind of all came out. Just blow up some more ammo crates and grab some some extra. Now, Caverns is also a multiplayer level, or at least half of it is. I think it's this half starting from here. I can see it. It's been so long since I actually played Caverns in multiplayer that I don't actually remember where the cutoff is, but, but I don't think it has the big water room. Yeah, you know what? That part would be really weird for a multiplayer map. But this bit with the, uh, in the caves, that, I think that worked. That would work. Yeah, I think this room is one of the spawn points. But again, it's been years, so I don't really remember. I'm not sure what I'm hitting there. I guess there's some dangly bits hanging off the ceiling, so... I was somehow hitting those. So I just wait for this these fellas to join us. Naturally. Close the door so it takes them more time.
I see one. Oh, hello. Okay, that was almost bad. Because these Genus Special Forces, they have pretty good accuracy as well, so... Usually if you give them an opportunity to hit you like that, they will. That makes sense. Could be going through this a lot faster, but I just really want to make sure that I don't lose much health here at the early part of the level. Right, right. Well, we're technically in the second half at this point, but but still, the hard part is yet to come. So just want to be real careful. And that just sounds really intimidating when I remember that uh, you don't get any checkpoints on in this game. Yeah, you really have to be careful, and if the camera ever does that sort of weird thing, that is just me adjusting my thumb in a weird way. That makes sense. The, uh, the thumbstick is... Actually, how is the thumbstick on, like, your... What is it? You use the, uh, the Tribute 64? Uh, no, I don't use the Tribute 64. I can't use the Tribute 64 because I'm controlling the game with the D-pad and aiming with oh, the stick, which right. is, of course, a little bit difficult on the Tribute 64. That, right, okay, so that means you're, uh, you've got the, what is it, old hard deep, or uh, analog stick as your, uh, yep. camera control. Old school, baby. Yeah, that, I, totally understandable why, uh, you were, you have to adjust your thumb. Yeah, as good as some of these newer sort of third party options are. They don't really work with my chosen control layout in GoldenEye. No, no, they would not. Like, GoldenEye is one of those games on the N64 that that uses that lets you use various different control configurations that use the uh, the different prongs. Yeah, and you can even use two controllers at, at once if you want to. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, the, the chosen controller configuration here uses the middle and the left prongs. Yep. And it feels quite good, actually. Trying And trying to map that to a modern-style controller sounds miserable, because... D-pad and analog sticks have gotten a, a lot closer in modern years. They certainly have. And with there only, be, only being two prongs on, well, basically every controller ever except for this one. Yeah, it's it's not really ideal. But on this specific controller, it actually works really, really well. Like, it's the closest thing to a modern sort of dual analog control scheme that you can get unless you actually use two controllers. Or you have the... Uh... A custom controller that Uncle Derek has that has a uh, that's just two N64s like uh, sewn together or N64 pads. Okay, so here is the sort of difficult part of the level. We could leave this for last. There is another room that you had to go to, but I want to do this now. So if I screw up, then I don't have to replay as much. Yeah. And it turns out I do screw up oh, a no. little bit because this guy is usually not here. He's supposed to be behind this glass here and where the explosion was. He kind of comes out of there and throws a grenade. I have no idea why he was back there. But yeah, I just lost almost all of my health in that one fell swoop. Jeez. It's that easy to mess up a, a level in... Well, mess up this level anyway. Okay, so here you want to be really careful because there's scientists there. I think one of them already got blown up as well. These guys have RCP-90s, as did the guy who was actually shooting at us. That's why we lost so much health. 
So be real careful. Because we do not want to hit the radio or kill any of the scientists. Because that would probably end up, well, failing the mission for us. Because if the radio gets blown up, well, we can't contact Jack Wade. Which is, of course, an objective. And if the scientists get blown up, well, that's also not great. But we have now managed to contact him, so now we can blow everything up. As soon as this idiot... Come on. Sir? No. Sir, no, we're not, we're not doing the line dancing. No. We, we can do the hustle later. Okay, now we can blow it up. There we go. This guy seems a little bit confused. There's some ammo in these boxes as well, but this box is actually a pretty fun and important one. Well, at least fun. You saw that there was a smaller box coming out of it. We'll get yeah. back to that in a moment. Because at this point I will go do the final objective. Which again, we could have done before going there, but I wanted to, you know, just just get that out of the way first, just in case. Right. Not sure where this guy came from. But we do have the RCP-90, so I'm not too worried about our firepower. No, don't go up. Yeah, there we go, this way. Some more delicious ammo crates. And that just gives us a whole bunch of ammo. Good stuff. Look how much ammo we have. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's that's insane. <laughs> So here is a bit of a shortcut or an alternate path to to the room that I'm going to. We could have just taken the regular door, but this is... Well, I don't really know if this is particularly safer, but... Well, at least we got all the ammo there, so... Might as well just try this. So now just wait for the enemies to come to us. Don't take any unnecessary risks. Especially now that we don't have much health. Come on, lads. Yeah, that makes quick work of them. There are more guys in this little cave here, so... I do want to lure them out before I run anywhere. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. I think there's one now. Yep, there he is. Yeah, just wait for him to get a little bit... Oh dear. That was almost bad. Okay, let's just play it safe. No need to rush. And there are still a couple more guys up there, so let's just blow up some stuff on the upper level and see if that got their attention. Okay, there we go. Come on. That was a little bit risky. So just take some deep breaths and just let them come to you. That'll do it. There might be more guys up there, but... They don't seem to be coming, so we can just... Take out this last computer and then leave. 
Now we could go up the stairs. There is a shortcut to the sort of the radio room and the exit door. But there's also a drone gun guarding it, so I'll just take the long route, I think. No reason to do anything silly here. And that feels like a kind of a dick move to to put one like right there. If you're not expecting it, you just go up the stairs and oops, I'm dead. Gotta start all over again. Yeah, yeah, that sometimes happens. And I also had to show off the thing with the boxes here in this room anyway, so might as well just head back. Right, so this box here. I see. So yeah, you keep shooting it and it keeps spawning increasingly smaller boxes until it spawns two computer monitors. And when you blow these up, each of them spawns an AR-33. Wow, okay. Which means... We can now dual wield AR-33s. <laughs> Hell yeah! Hey, come on, lads. Yeah, nice hop. Auto aim. Or lack thereof. It's okay, you got him. Yeah, that door at the end of the hallway there, that is the sort of shortcut door that I mentioned from the other side. And this takes us to the exit. Okay, I'm not sure why he actually hit me, because I, I'm pretty sure I was in cover, but never mind. So now I have very little health, which really doesn't help. And you will notice that I am approaching this door very, very carefully. And they just dive right back into cover, because there's two drone guns in this tunnel. Oh, jeez. But those are not really what I'm worried about. Oh, damn it. It's okay, you I got it. To the, to the rifles to hopefully get both at once, but, but not quite. Now, the real problem is that Trevelyan is also in that tunnel, and when he gets a clear line of sight, he will run away. And that means that people, well... His guards will spawn behind you, and they will wield dual RCP-90s and, and shotguns. Oh no! So we have to go. So I was hoping that Trevelyan wouldn't see me until the last moment. That almost went badly a couple of times there, but at least we made it. Yeah, holy shit. Yeah, caverns can be a little bit nasty. There's no body armor in the level either, so... Nice kill total. <laughs> also 56 headshots. That's probably more headshots than I have gotten in the entire game thus far. That is a lot of headshots, yeah. But never mind that, because now it's time for the final main level of the game. We are going to settle the score with Trevelyan. And yeah, there is also another control console on the actual antenna cradle, so we have to disable that as well. And this is some final boss music.
This is... Yep, that's a bridge. This is the walkway of death. Because <laughs> that guy can and will hit you from that distance unless your auto-aim actually locks onto him. Gross. And then these guys show up. Now these guards here, their strength depends on the color of their beret as you know, that, that's how all armies function. So the guys with the blueberries, they will wreck your shit, basically. Of course, the problem is that with these graphics, you can't really see what color it is until it's too late. Right, right. And yeah, in this level, you might as well get used to getting shot from every which way, because these guys will keep coming for you. They will never stop. We could have shot Trevelyan there, but I kind of prioritize these many other things in this room at the moment. Does shooting him early do anything for you? Well, when he's in one of these shacks, or when he stops to... Well, we'll just... we'll see it in just a moment. He's right down this ramp. So when he kind of stops to take aim at you, then you can damage him. And you know that you damage him when he talks. Oh, hey there, Alec. I'll just... Don't mind me, I'll just take this. That's just a dude. He's a dude with two guns. Yep. And like 80% accuracy, and I'm not sure what the reaction time is, but it's something ridiculous. I think we're technically supposed to go down the ramp and follow Trevelyan that way, but... We have more cover up here, so I'm not going to go there. That makes sense, yeah. This level is really, really hard on Double Edge. Also, we could have shot him right there, but I kind of forgot. For some reason, I was so focused on shooting him when he's down there that I just completely blanked out on the fact that you can actually shoot him when he's in these shacks. Oh, hello there, boys. Don't really want to mess with you. That's also why I probably should have... Well not forgotten to shoot Trevelyan, because that makes this mission shorter. Like right there. And of course, spending less time in this mission means... less opportunities to take damage. But, we now hear the Killer Instinct style danger music, and that means he's almost dead. And when Ooh. he is, he runs down here. This, this track is pretty good, though. Carefully does it. It's a pretty small platform. <laughs> and there we go. Now, if he happens to do a really, really long death animation, you can still get shot by one of his guards and fall off this platform and fail. So that's fun. But anyway, we have actually beaten GoldenEye on Double O Agent, or at least the main story. Which was a bit of a challenge, but... but hey, managed in the end. Good job. So now let's just watch Bond and Natalia make out for five, min five minutes here, in the jungle. Certainly there was a better place for you two to do this, guys. Now, apparently, Rare was not so keen on actually having the development team in the credits, so they did this sort of movie-like thing, so Mark Edmonds is the director of photography. I'm not sure why, because I'm pretty sure that the Super NES games that Rare made had, like, normal credits. 
Yeah, that's really weird. But of course it also fits the whole James Bond theme, so whatever. I mean, it does, but that's still bizarre. And even 007 Legends, like, w with its, like, monumentally long credits, uh, credited its its team, I, I think. I yeah, well... I can't remember anymore. I didn't... I, I don't think I ever actually, like, paid attention while, like, recording the credits for that game. But yeah, Beat Jones was the costume designer, which means that he made the models. Ah. And Steven Ellis is the second unit director, which means he made the multiplayer. I assume. He was also an, an animator. Sound effects made by Graham Norgate, or in this case pulled from a stock sound effect CD by Graham Norgate. Because he was a composer and, well, is a composer and not a, well, SFX creator. still going at it. This is, uh, still less awkward than the 007 Legends credits, so I'll give it that, I guess. Yes, well, I do hope that this entire experience has been slightly less awkward than 007 Legends. I mean, let, let's be real, like... It would take a lot to come even close to being as, a uh, poor of an experience, we'll say, as 007 Legends. But yeah, since we have now beaten the main game, how has this actually been? What's your opinion on GoldenEye at the moment? I can see why, why people, like, allow this as being groundbreaking for, like, console first-person shooters, uh, especially that one time we played uh, the multiplayer on NSO, like, that was really, really fun for a console shooter in 97 tech. Yeah, we'll get to more multiplayer at some point. Also, Nintendo Vision is still there in the Xbox Series X version. That's really funny. <laughs> But yeah, go ahead. What was I gonna say? James Bond will return in a terrible tie-in for Tomorrow Never Dies on the PlayStation. Oh no. And also in a Game Boy game nobody remembers. <laughs> this game has is definitely showing its age though. Uh, like, there's a lot of quality of life features that have uh, long since become standard to the genre and you know like this game just preceded all that so I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna knock it too much for that but trying to revisit like it is really hard to go back to it after playing like I don't know Halo or something it is a 90s FPS in all that entails like I respect it for, uh, everything that it did for, for video gaming. I just don't know if I could, uh... Oh, there's the coolest guy in Goldeneye. <laughs> I just don't know if I can sit through it myself. Definitely not in Double O Agent, though. Like, holy shit. You could probably have some fun on, like, Agent or yeah, Secret Agent. There are so many civilians. Yeah, only one of them actually shows up in the streets level because, well, that runs badly enough with one civilian model and textures. So now that we have had that sort of... Well, almost like the cast coming out to take a bow at the end of the show there. And that was kind of a thing that they did to... Well, Nintendo wasn't really keen on all the violence in this game, so they kind of had to present it more like a... that it was actually a movie or something. 
you know what? That that makes sense. And the game is rated T, not like hard M. But well, we're not quite done yet. Wow, it looks so much cleaner. Well, I would hope so. Because this is, of course, the XPLA version again. Specifically the Community Edition, which fixes a lot of bugs. Not all of them. I was gonna say, that one... Uh... Also, that, that stuttering is not the game, that's just me getting stuck on the wall as I try to strafe run. So yeah, I'm running through this on Agent to show off a thing. So let's just enjoy how much easier it is. And also the quite lovely music. And yeah, there we go, we actually got him this time. I said it last time we looked at the XBLA version, but man, it is fucking... I, like, I feel like I'm getting whiplash or something, just like going back and forth. Yeah, it's really a shame that this version never officially came out. Seriously, this does look really nice. Honestly, I don't think the new graphics really hold up all that well in most levels, because they do still use the 97 animation and that sort of thing, so it does look a little bit janky, but the cradle level here, it looks really nice. Alright, and we got him. The music doesn't change in this version, which is quite annoying. That's unfortunate. Just take up this idiot so he doesn't... And him as well, so they don't sneak up on us. Um... Yeah, I said they fixed some of the bugs, not all. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're... Yeah, that does look janky. Bye! <laughs> Yeah, and when you actually shoot him off this thing, you can see that little cutscene. There's also one if you fall off. <laughs> also, I'm not sure if those propellers are quite working right, but never mind. Also, the Community Edition fixed the credits background here. We'll see the original leaked versions, credits for a moment there, once we get done with this. I'm not gonna show the whole thing. It does scroll a, a lot faster than it does on the N64. This time we are in direct X vision. Ah. Well, I guess that if it said Nintendo Vision in the, uh... The X, the modern Xbox version, I guess then that's the, uh, that really is just an emulator and the, you know. Yeah, that is the, that is only on the XPLA. Yeah, this is wow. how it originally looked in the leaked build. Yeah, that looks awful. Yeah, it's not rendering it correctly. And yeah, there is the little plea to MGM and EOM Productions to bring GoldenEye back. <laughs> <laughs> Which, of course, didn't really work, so... So, yeah. Just wanted to show that. 